Okay, so next up is Adam, and uh, Adam is going to, to, uh, to tell us about yet another NPM uh, to Nix tool. And I'm sure that by the end of the talk, we're going to be convinced that uh, we need yet another one. So <laughs> give it up for Adam. So I'd like to just start by introducing myself. Uh, I joined NixOS back in 2017 after I've done a lot of contributions for a while. I've been doing a lot of KDE packaging, uh, security fixes, and also, sadly, taking care of uh, Node.js for a while. So I, I have some goals with this talk. It's to uh, in introduce the Node.js packaging ecosystem and teach you a little bit more about the module system, how to the different packaging package managers and what I think to be the best one that has a lot of lot in common with Nix and I would like to inspire you to make your own lang to Nix tooling in pure Nix. Oh, uh, this looked different on my laptop before anyway. Uh, so a short introduction to what what a Node.js module is. So there are a bunch of different modules, but I'm going to be talking uh, module types. But I'm going to be talking about is the one where where you do require and without a path. So one nice thing I think about Node.js in particular is how the require is just another function. It's not like a, a language construct like in Python where you have an import. It's not very predictable. You, here it's just a normal variable assignment. It's a function returning, returning a module. So what happens when you do require a module? Well, Node.js walks, first checks in your local Node modules path, which ha everyone has seen before, I guess. It's not so well known that it also walks recursively upwards in the directory tree until it finds another Node modules. And Thirdly, it falls back to the node path environment variable. We can use this to some interesting effect, which we will see later. Uh, the different node package managers does different things uh, in terms of flattening. So flattening means flattening the, the dependency graph I into a single level of dependencies. Node.js tried to solve the issues of uh, of uh, deep deep nesting, which doesn't work well on Windows by doing this, and and uh, also some other some other aspects which make this deep nesting not work very well. Um, the sad thing about this flattening is that it results in in impurities. So if if you have a flattened dependency tree. Anything can require anything, despite what is specified in the, in the dependency specification. W which is why they, they never went with this non-flattened structure in NPM or YARN. It's not entirely true, but mostly true. Uh, Node.js was released back in 2009. Back then, it did not have a package manager. And it was seen a bit of a, a bit seen as a bit of a joke. Mm. NPM entered the scene in 2010. It has resulted in Node.js becoming extremely popular. I guess most of you, at some some level, has to deal with that. Um, it's pretty NPM is pretty bad in almost every way imaginable. <laughs> It's slow as a dog. It keeps re-downloading dependencies at all times. Packages are a big flat, flattened mess. Anything can require anything when you you don't have any any idea of what's actually gonna end up in in your dependency when you require a dependency without looking in advance. Um, they did not have integrity checking for the longest time, so you had no way of making sure that what you thought you were going to download was actually what you ended up with. Uh, Sander van der Berg ha has made an amazing job on the Node to Nix tool, 
which I, which is great. It's extremely compatible with uh, with Node.js, but sadly, it only has code generation as an option, which <coughs> which I think is pretty sad, uh, considering that that you would now have to go through another step of generating the code before putting it into production. Uh, there. Then, a few years ago, Yarn entered the scene, uh, got extremely popular for some reason, tries to solve some of the performance issues of NPM by uh, do using aggressive caching. It does less flattening, but still quite a lot. They added log files from the start to try to reach reproducible builds in, in some, some, uh, at some uh, aspect. Uh, deterministic dependency resolution, so unlike NPM, which that where that changed every once in a while, also flattens dependencies. It has a pretty pretty great Nix tooling made by Morty and I think Simba has also worked quite a lot on that, which can either do code generation or do runtime generation, which means ingesting the the lock and and integrity files in pure Nix. It was a great source of inspiration for me how things could be and how I think most no, most tooling to Nix should work. We should not have to go through this massive code generation step. It still flattens node modules, sadly, so it's not ideal. and. It, it does some pretty complex things, which leads to performance not being ideal. Uh, PNPM is the new kid on the block. Actually, it's not very new. It was, rele it was it, it released about the same time as Yarn, but sadly has not seen the same level of adoption. It takes in inspiration from IED, which I think a lot of you have heard about. Oh which explicitly said uh, we take a lot of inspiration from Nix in terms of purity and the main selling point that they advertise is performance. It's incredibly fast. If you try to install some dependency which doesn't pull in native stuff, it's in the order of seconds. Has quite a few things in common with Nix. Has a centralized store, which means Packages are shared. I, if you install the same version of a package in multiple projects, it keeps reusing the same files on disk. It does this by hard linking and, and sim linking in combination, depending on which file systems you use, operating systems, etc. So you can only r require what you actually actively depend upon. This breaks a bunch of node packages. But it's not as common as you would think. It's pretty common that they include all their dependencies, despite none of the tooling really thinking about that case. That's not entirely true, because anything can always, which I, I learned during this, anything can always re require whatever is depended on by the top level application. So that, that was to solve the issues of tooling like linters having plugins and so if you install a plugin into your top level the top level application that needs to be available despite the application like ESLint not depending directly on it. So the store structure of PNPM is is abusing this this fact that Node.js is walking recursively upwards the tree so what happens uh, is that w when something has symlinked yargs, for example, into its node modules, Node.js walks upwards until it finds this, this node modules, which includes yargs plus symlinks to all of its dependencies, which means that it's going to short circuit at that point in the graph, uh, in, no, in your directory structure and not go looking for any other dependencies. This means that we can get P 
puri purity at runtime when we do require. We have s something akin to overrides, but they can only do graph rewriting. So l let's say a package called MS REST Azure is missing a dependency on a package. Then we can rewrite the graph and uh, include that dependency. This happens more rarely than I thought it would, so I do not, even in really crazy projects, have to use overrides much. And the nice thing is, it goes into the, the dependency lock file. So I, I, when I made my own Nix tooling, I did not have to think about supporting graph rewriting overrides because that was already implicit. There was a lot of hard points about making this tooling. One of the hardest is that the specifications in Node.js are all wrong. <laughs> they, they, they say that you, you, don't, you can't combine the two attributes like bin and bins in your package JSON file, but in, in reality, there are a lot of packages depending on this kind of behavior. The, the, specifica the specifications being wrong is pretty much a, a rule rather than the exception. So you do have to look at how applications actually behave rather than reading specifications when it comes to Node.js. Circular dependencies are way more common than I thought, which before I started doing this project, I had no clue that circular dependencies were even a, a thing in Node.js. I would imagine that that would lead to infinite recursion, but it does not. They do have some, some kind of uh, fake fixed point stuff going on. Uh, another thing is there are a, a large number of dependency types and a, a large number of invariants of those, like at the NPM registry, you can't assume that anyone is using the upstream NPM registry that is customizable. We have locally linked files, which inject symlinks to other local, locally linked projects. Uh, there are Git dependencies. There are a few other ones. The nice thing about PMPM is that it resolves Git, GitHub dependencies to their tarballs rather than using Git directly, so you do get a nice, nice performance boost out of that. PMPM has pretty rich metadata, so all dependencies are pre-resolved in in the dependency lock file, which is pretty nice. So you can just have a look of that file and see exactly what what your directory structure is going to look like on disk and what what thing is going to end up in your variables when you require something. That is not always consistent though. When it comes to things like like peer dependencies, which are which are meant for plugins. So again, let's say you depend on some linting linting feature that, that go typically goes into peer dependencies peer dependencies rather than dependencies because you can't mix and match linters, you can't mix and match uh, loggers, etc. Uh, and Nix ma makes these, traversing these graphs and working on these kind of graphs problem really, really easy. Uh, it's tr been truly been a breeze working with Nix with these kind of problems. There are some pretty ugly aspects of what I had to do to get this working in the first place, like using import from derivation just to do decoding of YAML files in Nix. This is some, somewhere I think we need to improve a lot in terms of being able to write plugins that, that uh, do decoding of unsupported file formats. And it's, I don't think it's a scalable approach to make everything uh, we want to decode a built-in. So PMPM to Nix it in itself is a quite a complicated beast, but using it is not. I took a lot of inspiration from what what Simba had done on Yarn to Nix here. So all you all you need to do to use it is 
is what you see on the screen. Everything, uh, all other necessary meta attributes are derived from, from package.json and frame.crap.yaml. And if these two files are local, so I if you reference the source uh, as a path rather than a fetch git or something, you don't even have to use package.json and shrinkwrap.yaml. <coughs> uh, one of the more recent features I added to this thing is the ability to use it for to manage your development dependencies. So what what you see on the screen will result in is an environment where, where you get the, the same version of, of node. You get a, a wrapped node interpreter with all the all the dependencies exposed to you exactly as if they were installed with with pnpm i find find this to be pretty great because i hate using any node package tooling um, i do ha i did have to create my own ad hoc override mechanism to, to for you to be able to hook into the and override any package in the dependency graph it is pretty awkward, but I, I didn't find a better way to do this than, than to provide an attribute set, which takes a function of your derivation that, o that you can override. If anyone is, is, has any better ideas, that would be pretty great. This pa package in particular was, is a good example of why Node.js is an insane ecosystem, because the override bit down here is something I had to do because the package actually tries to download shared objects for your platform from the internet <laughs> to be able to do image manipulation. Another big problem dealing with Node.js packages is this. PMPM to Nix is not very fast because it does faithfully make a Nix package out of every single NPM package that you pull in. And in some projects, this can be pretty hairy. I will show you a, a customer project I've been working on where, where the dependency graph is the most insane I have ever seen. Just a moment. <laughs> and if we zoom in on this, we can see that this is actually, <laughs> and this is not an unusual thing I found. These are about, eight, eight, about 850 packages that ended up in this dependency graph. So the performance of PMPM to Nix is not always great because of the large number of packages and the, the amount of import from derivation that has to happen. I'm hoping to improve upon this. So the state of the tooling now is mostly correct. It does mostly the right thing, what it needs to do. Uh, I have not found any new bugs in months. It's mostly feature complete. It does support almost every feature that PMPM supports. In <coughs> has a pretty comprehensive test suite where, which uh, is extracted from real world applications. Uh, interfaces, like o the override interfaces are mostly stable. That I do want to make a big change before I can say it's 1.0. And in the future, I would like to abstract out some generic bits, like uh, the work I had to do to resolve circular dependencies, where I have to walk the dependency graph, identify cycles, and merge the cycles into a single Nix package. So for, from the point of Nix, no, no recursion is going on at all. Uh, closure size reductions, as you could see, that closure was pretty Harry. Um, uh, all the, the native dependency tooling in, in 
Node.js is built with Python, and Python does get pulled into the runtime of every single closure that pulls in any native dependency as, as it is now. That is something I would quite like to avoid. It's very big. The tarball resolution, the matching GitHub revs to tarballs, is not entirely pure because PMPM upstream currently does not have checksums for those. And I would completely like to get rid of IFD. Uh, if the big ticket item there is getting <coughs> is getting YAML decoding in natively in Nix somehow. I would like to thank my previous employer for giving me a bunch of time to work on this at uh, company time and for the customer which is using this in production. And thanks to yarn to nix for being an inspiration of how I think all this to nix tooling should be. Um, the Node.js module system, I think, is actually pretty solid. It's one of the nicer interpreted languages out there in terms of module system. But the ecosystem is completely insane and near unusable, I think. If you do have to deal with it, which you probably do at some point, do use PMPM. I I, it's something that is truly appealing to me as a Nix, Nix person. So, any questions? All right. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> and with, uh, you finished early, we've got plenty of time for questions. And uh, people having questions, do me a favor and keep your arm raised so I, I see we have to go next. Um, how are you handling, what's it, pre? No. Post install scripts. I'm shelling out to npm in a bunch of spe in a in the pre-configure phase. Uh, you know, so in in so post install in the post install phase in in next you can. Uh, you so, so you're actually running the scripts the the modules have with them. Yes. Because Yantinix, for example, takes the approach of just ignoring the scripts. And then patching in uh, some of them again for the cases where you actually need them, because most of them are like Electron trying to download binaries or something like that. Yeah. And it could actually be easier if we try to always ignore them. And for example, Node SAS uh, needs some uh, foreign function interface building and patch in stuff like that again. That because the the far larger number of uh scripts are ones that we actually normally don't want to run probably. Okay, yeah, I always always run the, the scripts faithfully. Uh, yeah, I basically have uh, two questions. Um, the first question is about the graph you showed earlier in your uh, presentation. Did you uh, generate that from the runtime dependencies or the build time dependencies? Can you say that again? The graph yeah. uh, that, that you showed earlier in your presentation. Oh, that, that was the runtime dependencies. Okay, because I think 800 dependencies is not really uh, that much, mm -hmm. I would say, <laughs> runtime dependencies. <laughs> uh, but I think if you would uh, compare that to the to the build time dependency graph, then I think you see uh, you probably see a lot of packages that are involved. So perhaps you should also try that. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It looks even more crazy. Yeah. And then my second question is basically, um, yeah, you also created a uh, uh, a uh, generator that basically uh, produces uh, Nix expressions. Uh, I'm actually maintaining two generators myself, and there are yeah many more. Uh, what could you basically uh, recommend uh, yeah, to the other people uh, that de develop generators? I think one of your recommendations is that you preferably don't want to run a generator, right? Everything should work from Nix expressions. Yeah. But I think the difficulty is uh, you currently rely on doing things on the instantiation phase, right? You, uh, you probably import generated Nix expressions, I think, or I import derivations. Uh, or uh, no, I, the, the thing I use input from derivation for is only doing YAML to JSON conversion so I can import the, the 
shrink wrap YAML into Next. Oh, okay, then, then that's clear. But uh, are there any other things you would recommend that uh, that you would like to see in the other generators? Uh mm. No, I, I would like to see less generators and more more of these kind of pure Next tools. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> uh, do plugins work? Y yes. Uh, nothing special to be done. It just works out of the box. Yeah, the I do wrap wrap a bunch of binaries with setting the node path appropriately to to get plugins to work properly, to propagate them implicitly throughout the tree. Cool. More questions? <coughs> So uh, on the repository, you say that um, PNPM doesn't include checksums for tarballs. Yeah, that 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 th that was those Git GitHub tarballs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, do you think it can be included? Because yes, uh, yeah. I plan to look at that right. next week. Cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, nice. Thanks. Yeah. More questions? Nope. Well, in that case. Thank you very much for your interesting talk. <laughs>